the power of the blood. Why is there so much power in the blood of Jesus? What makes it so powerful? What makes it so different than any other blood? And why blood? You know, and the answer is very simple. <coughs> the answer is this. Every child takes their blood from the dad, never the mum. So I have the blood of my dad, you have the blood of your dad, and every person you see walking around has always takes the blood of the father, of the dad, never the mum. Right? And that's the same for Jesus Christ. Jesus was born of a virgin, the Virgin Mary. He did not have a physical dad and therefore did not take the blood of the dad of jo of of the virgin mary's husband which was joseph jesus was born of the holy spirit of god god the father that's why he was born of a virgin which means he has taken the blood not of the physical dad but of his dad in heaven so although we have the blood of our dads, Jesus Christ has the blood of his dad, which is God the Father. So the blood that was in the body of Jesus was not human blood, but God's blood. That's the first reason that makes Jesus' blood so powerful, was the blood of God. The Bible tells us that the life of every single creature, every human, every bird in the air, every the blood of every animal walking the earth, it says the blood of every the life of every creature is in the blood. So if you drain a human or an animal of its blood, it loses its life. Why? Because the life is in the blood. So when Jesus went to the cross and he shed his blood, which was the blood of God, and the life is in the blood, Jesus was giving mankind the life of God. Sin separates mankind from God. Why? Because God is a holy God. He is pure. There is no evil, no sin, no darkness, no corruption in him. He's holy. The angels in heaven sing from morning to night, scripture says, and they sing holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. They sing this from morning to night. That's how holy God the Father is. He is pure. He is holy. He does not dwell with sin, with corruption, with evil, with darkness. So when we humans choose to live in sin, in, and, and the Bible says we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we, are, we have all been separated from God because we, we all have sin. Even if it's a small sin or a big sin, the Bible says you have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is why God manifests himself in the form of Jesus Christ into the Virgin Mary came down into the earth that he created the one who has absolutely no sin in him he came and everyone who had sin in their body which causes you to separate from God because God and sin don't dwell together we can't be in unity with him you can't be in oneness with him Imagine being in oneness with God, one pure and holy and the other one in darkness and corruption and you're, you're walking with God like that. It doesn't make sense. 
So this is why God sent his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the word of God. In other words, the word that came out of God's mouth. When, G when God spoke, the word coming out of God's mouth is Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word of God, and the word was with God. So the word was together with God. And it says the word was God. So the word coming out of God's mouth is God himself. And then in verse 14, it says, and the word became flesh. So God became flesh. God materialized and manifested as Jesus Christ. So God came down into a world he created. This sin that separates you from God, Jesus took it off of everybody that was then that is now and that is to come it was one sacrifice that covers every that is forever it never stops never ending he took on all the sins of the world everything of darkness and he put it upon his own body the very sin that separates you from god jesus put it upon his own body and that's why he cried out on the cross, my, my, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because of the sin that people were holding that separates them from God, Jesus took it away from them, put it up on the, his own body. He was now, as human being, was separated from God. That's that were from God, because that's what sin does. And then he crucified those sins by putting them to death, taking them to the grave. And then he rose from the grave. Jesus is saying, I have just put the works of darkness to death. And I have risen from the grave. In other words, I have victory over these things. I have power over these things. I overcame these things. And I've risen from the grave. I've overcome death itself. And now he's saying, choose me, follow me. The one who took away your sins, the very sins that separate you from God, I took them on for you and I crucified them. So you can be free of sin, so you can be reconciled with God the Father. Choose me. This is why Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Nobody gets to God the Father except through me. There is no other way to get to heaven. There is no other way to get to God. Remember, sin separates you from God. This is you in your sin. This is God. God is pure and holy. Sin is over here. Sin separates you from God. It, it, it always has and sin will always keep people separated from God. But Jesus came, took these sins. And now he's saying, remember Jesus being the word of God, being God himself. Now he's saying, now receive me. I've taken away your sin. So now you're free of sin. Now receive me so I can come and live in you. Pure and holy. Re reunited with God, reconciled with God. So when Jesus went to the cross and was shedding the blood, he was crucifying your sins, putting them to death, and at the same time shedding the blood, which is the life of God. So he was taking the things of darkness away from you, out of you, and giving you the life of God. At the same time, this was happening simultaneously taking the darkness away from you and giving you the love of God taking darkness giving you light if you choose that sacrifice already happened on the cross but it's up to us today to choose if we want to accept that sacrifice or reject it if we reject the sacrifice it does not change the fact that it has already happened it does not change the fact that many people, including myself, has, have already accepted the sacrifice and live without sin and Jesus is in us. There are some people who have received Jesus and still are struggling with a bit of sin because they haven't learned yet how to submit fully to the Holy Spirit that will lead you into all holiness, righteousness, into the image of Christ. And the Holy Spirit is working with you and that's fine. But then there are those who just reject that sacrifice and don't want to have anything to do with it. You yourself choose to be separate from God. And then there's so much darkness. Darkness is separation from God. Continuous sin is separation from God. Evil wickedness is separation from God. And then they turn around and say, if God is real, why did that happen? No, God gave you a way out and you chose separation from God. So you, you're the one choosing darkness. 
you can't turn around now and blame God for your choices. You know, the power of the blood, it's actually the life of God. The blood of Jesus is the life of God. And we're covered in the blood of Jesus. We're covered, in other words, in the life of God. We're filled with the life of God. We're covered in the life of God. And this is why we can lay hands on someone and release healing. Because we're releasing life. Release peace. We're releasing life. You know, good health and life and um, peace and love. It's all the character of God. It's the life of God. It's who he is. So when we're releasing this peace, we're releasing life. We're releasing God. You know, so powerful, the blood of Jesus which is the life of God. I hope this video was helpful. I'm sure it is. And I thank you for your emails. Boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy. I've had people email me, and tell me that they've been delivered from demonic bondages just by watching replays of the videos where I'm asking you to renounce and then commanding the demons to leave in the name of Jesus. I've had people tell me that they received healing just by sitting here releasing releasing the power of God Jesus cannot be limited by screen you're limiting yourself if you think Jesus can be limited by screen screen Jesus can do anything and everything he does he cannot be limited by time or space if I'm in my country and you're over there on the other side of the world Jesus is not limited by those things we're talking about God here Jesus says you will be able to do what I have done and more well wow. So thank you for your emails, for your testimonies. Um, it's really encouraging. When you give these testimonies, when you tell me these testimonies, it's really encouraging for me. Because I get to see just how powerful Jesus is working, not only in my life, but in your life also. And I thank him for the work he's doing through me and through the screen and touching you in your homes. And, you know, God is amazing. God is amazing. So with that being said, if this ministry is blessing you and the Holy Spirit puts you on your heart to bless back, offering link is below. And you can purchase my books. Um, I fasted and prayed for all of these. Uh, New Age, A Cult to Jesus Christ, Worldly Life of Deception, Who is God, Spiritual Warfare, and This is Grace. God bless you all.